Ableton on Air is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Additional support for Ableton on Air is sponsored in part by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together. to slink away now because I have to do some testimony in a little while, but I'm going to give this over to Julia Tesler, who is one of the partners in making this all happen, and you all know her, so Julie. <laughs> One of the things that we felt was important today was to recognize people working in your communities, working as advocates, doing what you can to reduce stigma. And so uh, in past years, we've only really recognized legislative leaders for awards as well as the team too. And this year we've said, nope, people in the communities who do the work there, the grassroots work, that's really critical too. And so we rec are recognizing um, we recognized Julie Cunningham earlier. We have three other people we'd like to recognize for their work. Um, and just to repeat what the criteria was, is outstanding commitment to service to advocate on behalf of individuals with mental health and developmental disabilities, demonstrate passion and commitment to support individuals, advocate on state policy and funding to advance and improve community-based system of care, active in community uh, and lo local and state uh, groups that work on these issues, supporting individuals to promote recovery and integration into community life, educating the community um, about these needs and, and, and services and the people we serve, and using effective advocacy strategies to overcome challenges and barriers to individuals in the community. So all levels of work. So. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Kirk. Do would you like to? to Actually, can I wait? Okay, Jenna. Uh, Jenna made uh, one of the nominations, and she's going to introduce the first. <coughs> Jenna and Chris and Christy Everett too. Like many good um, healthcare team, healthcare providers, we come in teams. So there are two of us here. Yeah. <laughs> Christy Everett and myself, Jenna Trombley, work at the Clara Martin Center, and it is an honor and a privilege for us today to shine the spotlight on Marla Simpson and have a chance to share with you a bit about Marla's contributions as an advocate. So I will just mention... I have had, um, personally, the real privilege to work next to Marla as a professional side-by-side, -side, and both of us spent some time working at Second Spring down in Williamstown. That was a good number of years ago, but it gave me an opportunity to really understand who she was as a professional contributing back to the field, um, and it was an honor to have that, that experience with you as well. Um, I just want folks to know that Marla has dedicated her life to um, raising um, the bar on rights, on needs, on services, on policy language, on everything related to advocacy for mental health services. She's had many impacts to us as an organization, and perhaps to many of you, and you may not have known that, so we're going to share a little bit about, about that so um, you know a little more about her today. So Marla has been a strong public advocate in the support of mental health services in Orange County, also the state of Vermont at large. She is a member of our board advisory committee and our local standing committee. She was nominated by the governor to be on the committee for the Vermont Governor's Council on Pathways for Poverty. She also serves in the Vermont Adult Program Standing Committee on Mental Health. I don't know where you find the time, because that's a lot of committees. Um, and to get here today, pretty amazing. Marla, all of these committees provide feedback to the department to help ensure that the best possible care is being provided to the designated mental health agencies across the state. Um, it's a tireless effort, it's uh, dedication, and um, we recognize and appreciate that. Christy's gonna share a bit more about some of your additional contributions as well, the center and state at large. That's why I say there's two of us, because she does so much that we needed to both sort of talk about it. Um, in addition to all the work that she's done in the communities, Marley's changed our organization and changed our community. She has, uh, she comes with a master's degree to the work she does as well too, so she has actually been uh, beneficial and really influential in training some of our staff 
on how to we how do we work with mental health issues, um, providing some training to staff on suicide awareness, uh, mindfulness, um, pain management, all those other areas too. Um, and it brings a different focus to what we ask staff to do and where they learn from. It's just that voice. She has spent time writing letters um, to local newspapers, really to address mm -hmm. the stigma in the communities to different avenues there. And she works at Pathways Vermont and their Worm Line as well too. So I can only imagine that through that work she's also saved lives and the work that she's done too. Um, so we can't say enough about her. And we are lucky to have her in our community. I think Vermont is lucky to have her as well. another run at stand-up comedy at the, at the Chandler Theater in Randolph, Vermont, at the Muggsy's Italian Show. This is my character, Beatrice. She's very funny, very, very funny. We can, I had three cups of coffee today. I got two hours of sleep because a very poignant dream from my mother in heaven awoke me. I could not stop rehearsing what I was going to say today. So, this is a serious matter as well. Um, but, but for the grace of God, there go I. I am a native Vermonter, born and raised. Um, we are in a global village uh, in this brave little state of Vermont. I embrace diversity. I welcome diversity. Um, as the John Ware play says, we are all connected by six degrees of separation from the very, very top to the very, very bottom. I, I myself have been to all levels and um, like to stay more in the middle of the herd with a little bit more serenity. And no, sanity is not overrated. Um, I am also psychic. I have been since I was a child. Um, I have, I've learned a really big lesson in the last two weeks. Ask for help. Strength and independence and self-awareness and self-confidence <laughs> are absolutely wonderful. Earn that. Own it. But know when to ask for help. I am independent, <laughs> but I am very, very interdependent. I have to honor the Department of Mental Health the wonderful, spectacular, loyal Clara Martin Center, amazing Pathways Vermont, my team members on the Pathways Vermont support line, the state standing committee, the local Clara Martin standing committee, all of the DAs throughout the entire state. I've had the pleasure of knowing many commissioners, uh, formerly served on the governor's council. I write, be believe me, if you want to get a message across, Go to the source. Consider the source. I have called the White House. When I was involuntarily locked up in a psych ward, I called Bernie Sanders' office. They listened. They helped. Bernie for president, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie's office listened when seemingly nobody else cared that I was in despair. I was coercively, forcibly treated. Now, honestly, I take psych meds twice a day. I take a ton of vitamins. Um, less than two weeks ago, I almost had a complete nervous breakdown. I was physically sick. I was emotionally strung out. It was like a bipolar meltdown. And, um, but long story short, um, when I was first diagnosed with a serious condition, let's Let's eradicate mental illness. Let's not say mental illness anymore, okay? Let's say we have conditions. We are sensitive people. We are gifted people. A lot of us are empaths. 
We feel, we feel deeply. We feel sorrow, we feel pain. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. The Dalai Lama said that. There is an I in illness. I can't manage everything on my own. There is a we in wellness. We working together within the system, with each other. We can agree to disagree. It makes the world go round. But kindness and compassion and communication are free. I have many advocates and friends and professionals and family and friends in heaven, many, many earth angels. If you are here, you are amazing. You brave the storm. Uh, everything from top to bottom is going on politically. We are here if you have breath to breathe and eyes to see with some glass glasses. Um, hands, uh, use, use all of your powers. I can't emphasize enough writing, advocating, doing, working. Working, working, working. It's very hard work, but I love the work. I, I, I wouldn't be, rather be any other place in the world right now except maybe the red carpet in Hollywood. <laughs> HCRS, so the Healthcare and Rehabilitation Services in Windham and Windsor Counties. She's the manager of our peer support programs. But she, well, first of all, before I do this, I just want to say I was so impressed with the passion and the dedication and the compassion and the heart and the vision of all the speakers. It's just so, it's absolutely remarkable. And I really want to appreciate it. And that is what makes Vermont, this state, really incredible. So I, wanted, I just wanted to say that, but I also want to say that Malaika is really a part of that, and I'm really honored and proud to be able to, uh, to be here, uh, and that Malaika was awarded that in the company of so many other amazing people. And she uh, has been active on the, uh, the statewide Adult State Standing Committee for many years. Uh, she's worked very closely with Vermont psychiatric survivors in really sending that message and ensuring that the voice of the people we serve is there and it's heard. And she is so passionate about that. She has brought that passion and that vision to our agency. She, she is the co-chair of our Ethics Committee, Clinical Standards Committee. She's involved in our adult leadership. She has provided training to our community around intentional peer support across the board. Her MAD Studies curriculum have really pushed the envelope. And I have to say personally, in my role, I seek her counsel out and I, I say, Malika, what do you think? In developing our philosophy of care, one of the things that I know she really pushed was stigma 
and discrimination and oppression exist. And we as a community need to do something about it, as an organization, as an agency. And that is part of our philosophy of care. And she brings that. She brought that and continues to bring that and to bring that passion and that vision there. And we are, I just have to say that it's just, it's been, it's a great honor. I know Malika, I do want to add that I don't, uh, is, uh, would have been here, I probably should have said this to begin with, but she is on her way to Kenya. Uh, so clearly her advocacy uh, has no bounds. It's, she's in Kenya. So uh, she is, she is really, uh, she's been, uh, uh, she has really moved us to the place where our services and our system is a really different system and it's because of that vision and because of that passion. And I know she couldn't do it without an amazing team. Kate Lamphere nominated her, and she gave me the, there you go, our adult division director. And we have members of her team. If you could just raise. So really, it's amazing. team effort is, it's not just our team, it's the community, and really spreading the word, whether it's with emergency services, whether it's our, with our local hospitals, whether it's with, with the rest of our community through the Hive and so many other things that she's been doing, so, uh, and actually I'm really curious, I, there is a speech. No, no, no. No, there no, is no, no, no. Oh, you want to say a few words? Okay. I want to say a few words. Please do. Please do. So. He's going to be speaking oh, at 11. That will be our next, uh, oh, that'll another be next. award. Okay, got it. So, uh, in any event, I just really want to, on behalf of Malika, Malika, it's it's really an honor. And I know, uh, you know, we will text her, let her know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, she already knows. She's she knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's, it's a long commute, so, yeah. But anyway, so, thank you. Thank you. community advocates uh, are very active and not always in this building when we want them. Um, so we have one more community advocate award. It uh, was nominated by Kirk Postal Lake from Washington County Mental Health. Sarah Holland is not here, but uh, Kirk will say a few words about her and share her uh, award with her. I will. Well, unfortunately, best laid plans sometimes don't exactly unfold what we thought. We were going to surprise Sarah with this award, so <laughs> she was in the room and she has proceeded to sneak out. So we'll, we'll be sure to give this to her later, but I'll just quickly say a few things. Um, although, of course, words are just words, and the work she does um, is beyond that. But Sarah Holland is an amazing advocate. She came into her role as an advocate over 20 years ago through advocating in her own life through her own experience of mental illness. Um, <clears throat> and now, 20 years later, what she does is share that experience to inspire others, to reduce stigma, and to build awareness about the challenges that people face with mental um, illness, and more importantly, how people thrive even when they have these challenges. She demonstrates a passion for supporting the community-based work um, through serving on Washington County Mental Health's Board of Directors, and she's our incoming president, uh, which we're very pleased about because, she, again, she's just such a strong advocate and a committed uh, community member. <clears throat> she's spoken publicly many times about her own experiences through local RAP uh, recovery groups uh, with our community-supported program, uh, and more recently at our 50th anniversary where she shared her personal recovery story, which is very personal and very meaningful to her, and yet she recognized that opening up about that was the key to helping other people feel that they can do the same so that we no longer have to keep these types of experiences in the shadows and let them impact our lives in negative ways. Uh, <clears throat> she also uh, was on the VPR podcast that many of you may have heard about, which is called They Are Us. She was the lead story. So if you're interested in learning more about her really powerful experience of recovery, uh, you can find it there. Um, she also has been on local access TV, both for Vermont, again, speaking to the community health system, Washington County Mental Health Services, and how 
uh, instrumental Washington County Mental Health was to supporting her to get to where she is today. So she's really a perfect example of someone uh, who thrives in recovery, which I think is so important for us to embrace, right? Um, despite her struggles um, that you know, she has experienced and continues to experience, she does not let that define her. She's now not only a strong advocate for herself, but her friends. She's advocated for a friend who's a wonderful artist to get her work out into community galleries, show her amazing creativity, and therefore aid in her own experience of recovery. Recovery. Uh, and you know, now Sarah's a successful business owner. She owns Rivers Bend Design, which is a wonderful landscape company. Uh, she's a proud grandmother, and she's a wonderful woman. <coughs> Sarah, wherever you are, <laughs> congratulations. We did also want to give a legislative leadership award to um, Senate President Pro Tem Tim Ash. Unfortunately, he had a meeting in Burlington. But he'll be back at 115, and he says 15 of us can come to his office and present his award. So I'll just go to the front hall, in the middle there, at 10 after 1, and anyone who wants to come, let's crowd in and let him know how much we appreciate his support. Because already he brought together a meeting of leaders in the legislature, both House and Senate, to talk about the need to shift resources to invest in community mental health. We really have no stronger leader and he deserves our appreciation. Also, some of you don't get to always talk to these folks. Here's a chance you can tell them what you think. Um, he, will, he is listening, um, and I do hope that at lunchtime and throughout the day and when you leave the building, you'll continue your conversations with legislators. If you, don't, if you feel like you're inspired now and you want to do it but you didn't make an appointment, just go to the Sergeant at Arms office in the front hall on the left and ask them to locate a legislator for you with a note and saying you want to meet with them at lunchtime, meet in the cafeteria, and then they, they have to fight to get the investment we need and the support we need for our services. So um, each one of you being here today has made a big difference. This Senator Kitchell, when she looked around and saw all of you, she really did take note. Um, February 25th, there will be public hearings around the state, around the state budget another opportunity to talk with legislators and let them know what you think. But you can call them at home, you can email them, there's all sorts of ways and if you want support to do that, you can um, talk to me or talk to the executive directors that are here or Nami Vermont or Vamhar and uh, we can help you uh, with your advocacy efforts and there's certainly lots of expertise here. So we wanted to take the rest of our time and it's not as much as we had thought for folks to share their stories. We, I know we have someone over here, and Nick from NAMI Vermont is going to lead this part of the program. Good morning, everybody. I'm Nick Martin. I'm the program director at NAMI Vermont. Um, all of our programs are free. Come check us out. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, this Saturday we have a mental health recovery workshop scheduled in St. Johnsbury. A couple weeks we have one in Manchester and a few weeks we have one in Burlington. So to sign up go to NAMI Vermont, uh, NAMIVT.org. Um, we're lucky in Vermont. We're connected in so many ways, whether it be on social media, our schools, uh, bumping into our neighbors at the general store, or um, sharing a pint of Ben and Jerry's with a close love <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> Another way that we're connected is we're all here for mental health advocacy in a robust mental health system. Uh, one of the best ways to advocate and uh, share your passion is to tell your stories. And so let's move on to, into that. Can we hear a um, welcome with, for Jody Garrard? I'll be short. Um, e. Cummings said a quote that I've kept since high school that said, to be nobody but yourself 
and a world that is doing its best night and day to make you everyone else means to fight the hardest battle that any human being can fight and never stop fighting. And so when I think about myself and I strive to be myself, I think I'm a mother of three. I'm a wife who next week will ce celebrate 30 years of marriage. I, <laughs> I'm a writer. And for 36 years, I'm a survivor of mental illness. Um, I have been hospitalized over 40 times in my life. I have been in dozens of programs, day hospitals, and I've sat doped up, drooling in a lot of facilities. Um, my writing has lifted me, and being to be able to be myself and say, yes, this is who I am. I um, have induced trauma voices that I hear every day that command me to kill myself every day, but I decide I am a writer, I am a mother, I am a poet, I am a person trying to be myself, trying to be nobody but me. And so I had just a couple poems I wanted to leave with you. The first one is called The Light. Oh, there you are, light, such a bright friend in the morning of night's end. I lift my head to my great fate of warmth, a date I've missed before because of sadness. I smile into the shine, such a design to overcome depression. I am alive, surviving in the fill of my need to keep going on. I take it in, feed on today, for I am high, flying with the golden wealth of health. I retain that I contain for sensation. I write it down, forget times I frown, dip down into despair. It is enough to dare to be here, in this life, this morning. So dear to be a wife, a mother, a writer, a constant fighter, soaring on the current currents of this sunshine, a lifeline through an illness shaded for others. The sorrow invaded in the spectrum, my flow from high to low. I know it is a disease, partly my genes, these high and low scenes. But today, today is wonder-filled, senses willed away from past as I cast eyes to the sky, my thoughts happy, warm, wondrous without the storm of recalled loaves. I know the holes I fall into, patterns shaped, draped about me in darkness. I hold tight to the illusion of this good day, the light, protection, a connection to my passion to lift others, a gift of words to the world. I have been formed, made, displayed this way. So I write with the rays in days that overcome the gray beyond the way my life sometimes is curled beneath sheets, defeated with tears, fears, thoughts of death in too many breaths. But oh, not now. Now in the bright whiteness, happiness away from the mess holds my heart that wants to share with others this start. I wrap myself in the brilliance of this journey, me in the sensations, the elations, despite the misery. I escape into the embrace of a pen as I face forward in this morning sun. could be the springtime of this plant, the flowering bud, the rich green of each leaf, the dark soil feeding, the water quenching, and I could be okay to be okay. I don't have to hurt over the years that the bush didn't grow, didn't make a statement for the yard. I cut and prune careful in my design, and with the breath, I cast off the unwanted like the trauma, littering the ground with it, molding my perfection. I stand back to admire and realize there will always be more to take away. But perhaps I can let it go back to the wild living, creating its own way to be. Happy in the wonder of itself, I close my scissors, let them rust, let the beauty be in its living. I sit with sunglasses on, protecting my view, as I watch the natural order take care of my yard. And it's okay. First, I'd ask you to, for your indulgence. I'm uh, dealing with side effects from a medication tapering process, so if I'm not completely coherent, 
that's my excuse. Um, thank you. I'm, my name is Dan Toll, and my recovery story, I want to offer my perspective on peer survivor support services. Just a level set, uh, I characterize peer support as people with mental health illnesses who are in recovery connecting with like individuals. Together they mutually share and assist each other with their wellness. So what follows is first my story, a case study for peer support, and examples of what I think are ways to enhance the mental health care system in Vermont through peer or su survivor support. I was diagnosed over 20 years ago with a, with a mood disorder. I managed to raise two wonderful children and maintain a career in corporate America for Ooh. three decades. Uh, with a wife uh, at home for most of that time. <laughs> Three years ago, I left Connecticut and corporate America and moved to Vermont. During my Connecticut years, my treatment was the traditional Western model, medical model. Psychiatric meds from a psychiatrist, talk therapy from a therapist. However, despite having my symptoms being controlled the majority of the time, through this traditional model to mental health care, I, they still negatively in, impacted me in many ways. My physical health, my jobs, my financial security, and ultimately my 35 year marriage uh, with the love of my life. Moving to Vermont then changed my life. Here I was in, introduced to a broad spectrum of healthy alternatives to the medical model, including mindfulness, yoga, herbalism, and most importantly, peer slash survivor support. After moving to, to Vermont, I attended a peer support group and soon had an epiphany. Number one, I'm not alone. Number two, there are others suffering and enjoying the benefits of our individual mental health conditions. They can help me and I can help them. Within a year I joined the ranks of mental health volunteers and professionals with lived experience, becoming a peer supporter including I helped launch and facilitate a NAMI Vermont peer support group, second Thursday of the month, four o'clock, CVMC, the boardroom. <laughs> Well, I have business cards up there with the info, so please come and join me. Secondly, I uh, like my very esteemed colleague who deserved every bit of accolades she received, Marla. I am a member of uh, the Adult Standing Committee. I just, I would argue, and I'm very biased, uh, in some ways, better service can be delivered at a lower cost than the traditional. Uh, mental health model. As a, as, as a NAMI facilitator, I volunteer my services um, on the Adult Standing Committee of Volunteer Services. So, in summary, in my peer support services roles, I have learned that this mental health care model has not, not only been among, amongst the most effective tools for me, but I believe for many of the people that I've, I've uh, worked with and dealt with in my role as a peer supporter. So again, information on Adult Standing Committee and the Center of Vermont uh, peers on the desk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Um, on deck is Shannon Fox, but first we'll hear from Carolyn Brissetti. I'm Carolyn Bersetti, and I have lived with mental illness all my life. Uh, I was diagnosed and discovered when I was in school, uh, and I've always been connected with the community, which has helped tremendously. Uh, I've had good days and bad days, which most people do, and, and when I have bad days, I just backed off, and I learned how to work with my mental illness. And it hasn't been a curse, it's been a blessing. 
I've had opportunities that I never would have had if I hadn't had a mental illness. I learned to do public speaking at conferences. I never would have had that opportunity. I had opportunities to help other people like myself, which has been a blessing. The trust that peers have between other peers and they will talk openly with each other in ways that they don't with other people because we experience the same thing. Uh, I have also always been connected with the community in that even though I may have been hearing and seeing things, I would be active like in the Red Cross. I joined the American Red Cross. I worked on the disaster team. I respond to disasters. I worked in shelters. I worked in shelters even though I may have heard voices and have seen things. And I've had people who had come in to the shelters who have been stressed out because of losing their homes and wanting to take care of their fats and whatnot and trying to help them to meet their needs at that particular time. I've also had an opportunity to um, join the Behavior of Mental Health team for Washington County, which was really great. Uh, I worked as, um, I also have had opportunities to work uh, I also had opportunities to learn how to come to the state house and talk to uh, our legislature and to talk to other people to make them aware of what mental illness is. Um, uh, I also have learned that I could be a leader. I never thought I could lead in anything. Uh, I had a hard time in school. I couldn't write. That's why I don't have notes. And um, my spelling, nobody could read it. I could always communicate well verbally. Uh, I was told I wasn't going to graduate from high school. Well, I did. Uh, I mean, I wasn't supposed to accomplish much in life. I mean, I was going to be a, probably a housewife or take care of a house or something, but I wasn't going to do like mental health and recovery uh, workshop, um, help facilitate that, um, do peer support, and I've also learned how to do ratings, <laughs> which, which is an alternative care that some people are trying. And, so people have good success with that, and I hope that it'll become a part of a tool that people can use. Uh, I have tried different ways of keeping myself well and healthy. I've done all kinds of things, yoga, meditation, you know, and, you know, walking, exercising, and I'm even learning how to take care of dogs and cats and, and cleaning cages. <laughs> and being a person from Barry City, we don't have much contact with horses. And I had just recently had my first contact with horses. And I walked around the ring. If you could see me being afraid of the horse, and the horse knows it, you know. And so of course the horse is going to do what the horse does. And I'm leading them across around the ring. And I come back. Okay, I did that one. I said, phew, I can over there. <laughs> now I can, I know I can walk a horse. <laughs> and so that's part of the recovery process. And having relapse is part of my life. Um, I have a month about every year that takes me to recover and get back on my feet. Um, I've had meds that didn't work, and I had to learn how to advocate to get the right medicine. <laughs> they want to stay with the same old thing. <laughs> so 
So well, that's pretty much the story I have to tell. And if anybody wants to talk about mental illness or have any questions, feel free to ask me because I'm, I'm very open. <laughs> Now we're going to re recognize one of the recipients of the award earlier, so can we hear from Sarah Hallman? Uh, her, her. Oh, our nominee, Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. We found her. <laughs> Sarah, would you please come on up here? So you all, yeah, come on up. Thank you. Thank you. So you all already heard my pitch true story about how great this one is. So here she is, we found her. Sarah, basically I just told everybody you're wonderful. <laughs> how much you've shown us through your life and your experience to get to the place you are now. You're gonna be our board president of Washington County Mental Health. You run your own business, you're a grandmother. You have friends that you support, so she rocks. <laughs> so without further ado, I would like to present this Mental Health Advocate Award to Miss Sarah Hall. such a wonderful morning, and um, I'm just uh, uh, humbled by this, um, my goodness. Um, part of my recovery, uh, so it's like 20, I don't know what you told about me, but like 24 years of um, uh, hospitalizations and uh, uh, medication changes and, and uh, um, uncertainty. Uh, but relationships with um, my peers, uh, with uh, people in the uh, community mental health system, uh, with people in the inpatient hospital system, uh, with people having nothing to do with mental health. <laughs> but um, that's what's been my recovery. And um, you can say I'm giving back um, through uh, my um, position on the board, Washington County Mental Health Services, um, but um, I'm, I'm getting help. And so uh, it's a lifelong endeavor, and um, I'm uh, trying to incorporate my recovery into my, uh, what I do every day, my day job. Um, and so my connection with employees, uh, my connection with vendors, being honest, uh, not keeping secrets, being um, saying uh, what happens to me and uh, my struggles um, every day, and uh, just being um, matter of fact about it. And so, um, anyway, this is awesome. <laughs> Calvin Mowen, but first let's hear from Shannon Fox. All right, um, my name is Shannon Elizabeth Fox. I'm from Windsor County. This is literally my first day advocating for mental health, so I apologize for any missteps. Go big, go home, I guess. Um, <laughs> I know that we've spoken a lot about stigma today, and I feel the need to address my own identity to reduce internalized stigma. I am a flatlander, <laughs> and I'm happy to say that I'm on the path to better living in the Green Mountain State. <laughs> um, define flatlander. <laughs> uh, from Massachusetts. Um, so I wanted to speak today to highlight the challenges of access to preventative services. Uh, I've struggled with mental illness um, beginning in my youth and throughout my adult life. In January of last year, after three months of a partial hospitalization program, for which I am very grateful for, 
and quitting a well-paying government job in Colorado with full benefits because of its toxic environment and hostility towards mental illness, I moved back to New England where the bulk of my support system lives. While unemployed in Massachusetts, I was eager, eager to work. I am an arts administrator and advocate, and working in the arts is a core part of my identity. I also knew that work would provide structure and stability to my day, day life and would aid in my recovery. In March of last year, I moved to White River Junction to work at Northern Stage, which is an amazing arts organization that I'm proud to work for. Um, overwhelmed by the process of transferring all my services to a new state, I fell into a familiar hole for those in recovery, relapse. Um, I stopped my medications, I lost interest in finding a new therapist, and I, became, and I began coasting. By summer, I was unstable again, taking more risks, falling behind in my work, and having suicidal ideation. In June, I went to my local emergency room because I felt unsafe. I talked through my safety plan, was referred to my county's designated agency, made a commitment to set up all my services and to get back on the track to recovery, and so I was discharged that night. Though I struggle with mental illness, I take responsibility of my engagement in my own recovery. I was committed to getting on the right path. I set up services with my designated agency, got a primary care physician in White River Junction, got a referral for psychiatric services at my cl closest hospital, and began therapy again. Um, I felt energized, excited, hopeful, and I was being a good doobie. Um, my primary care, my PCP was doing a great job. They kept a close eye on me and restarted some of my basic medications but they would be the first to tell you that they are not a psychiatrist and not qualified to pro provide thorough assessment, further diagnosis, and medication treatment. I'm, uh, I did not qualify for psychiatric services for my designated agency, so I waited on the list at my local hospital. Uh, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. My therapist, who recognized me as safe and stable, and relatively stable, began recommending that I just go inpatient to get access to <coughs> psychiatric services. I knew that, the, that going inpatient would impact my finances and maybe taking away resources for my peers who are in crisis. By December, I called my local hospital again to ask where I might be able to reserve, uh, receive access to psychiatric services. They said I was on the list. My heart leapt. This was it. The last piece of the puzzle was finally falling into place. Then they finished their sentence. You're on the list of people to call and inform that we will not be providing psychiatric services due to patient volume. I began crying. I was so frustrated. I started calling every psychiatrist in the area, and these were the answers I got. We do not take Vermont Medicaid or MVP. We do not take insurance. You need to pay hundreds of dollars up front and then try and get reimbursed through your insurance. You cannot receive uh, services at a different county's designated agency than the designated agency for your county. We do not take referrals from outside our hospital network. You need to move all of your health care serv services to our hospital network. Mind you, these hospitals were 45 minutes to an hour away. Um, I've spent the last month desperately seeking services, all while struggling to shower, to eat properly, and not hurt myself. Last week I had an appointment with my PCP, who I'd really developed a great relationship with. They said that they would call the local hospital one more time but then I was going to have to change my care network to either Springfield or Central Vermont in hopes of maybe getting a referral and starting all over again. I was dismayed at the prospect of leaving a healthcare provider that I felt comfortable with and trusted. This past Monday, while struggling through another day and avoiding my personal and work responsibilities, I got a call from my local hospital to schedule an appointment with their psychiatric team. I cried again. My PCP had worked magic in that final phone call to the hospital. I am so lucky that I had great support from my therapist and PCP who got me through the past seven months. I am lucky that I have friends and family who support and accept me. I am lucky that my employer is accommodating. I am lucky that I even have a job. I am lucky that I have the coping skills to advocate for myself. I am lucky that I had a car to get to my designated agency, to get to my primary care, to get, or, or if I had to change my network to 45 minutes to an hour away. I'm lucky that I'm college educated. I am lucky I am privileged. But this is not a success story. This is a highlight of the gaps in services for Vermonters. While waiting for services, I had to call crisis hotlines, schedule emergency appointments with my primary care, take time off work, take unhealthy risk, and strive to survive through the endless cycles of negative self-talk, depression, and a desire to end my life. I'm lucky that I didn't seek inpatient stabilization and put a strain on our already overworked crisis system. I do not pretend to be a picture of recovery, and I don't want you to think that I'm not 
deeply grateful for my designated agency and for my support network. There are people here today who are better qualified to speak about statistics and policy changes. I'm only qualified to tell my own story. But if I have the capacity to tell my own story, to articulate the challenges that we with mental illnesses face, I feel I have the responsibility to tell my story for you all to realize how difficult it is for my peers who cannot be here today to tell their challenges. My peers who not only face mental illness, but are also faced with serious physical illnesses, developmental or intellectual challenges. My peers who don't, do not have the economic, educational, or social status or skills to navigate a complex and frustrating system. My peers who also face Ableton On Air is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Additional support for Ableton On Air is sponsored in part by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together.